Excellent. Hello and welcome. Uh, most of you know me. My name is Michael Heckman. I'm the Managing Wealth Advisor at Sable Point Wealth Management. And part of uh, what we do is uh, look at the holistic financial planning picture. And one of the ways that we do that is we partner with uh, different custodians and uh, investment and insurance firms to kind of help make that happen. Uh, with us today, we're pleased to have Luke and Lee from Highland Capital Brokerage, uh, which uh, uh, Lee is our disability specialist. And so we brought them aboard. Uh, today's presentation is geared towards pharmacists, optometrists, and dentists because of the similar uh, uh, class ratings for this space. So uh, afterwards, we'll give you the contact information if you have any questions after the recording. Other than that, uh, Luke, Lee, glad to have you on. Absolutely. So thanks so much for having us on, uh, Mike. And Lee and I here at Highland, we partner with financial advisors like Mike to help you guys have the best needs um, or basically being able to tackle those needs as much as you need, not just the retirement planning side of things, but also on your insurance protections to make sure that, you know, we are covering all your bases there and making sure that we're giving you a plan that is really all encompassing for everything you need to do from retiring and savings, but also in your potentially more immediate needs while you're during, uh, during your income savings, uh, powerful years of trying to get that savings there. So life insurance, long-term care is a huge part of what Mike and the team over here uh, at Highland do from a partnership standpoint to make sure that you guys have all your bases covered. So Lee, I'll let you jump from there and start taking it over on the DI side. All right, well, thanks for having, here, having me on this call, Mike, as Luke, mentioned so kindly i am a di specialist i've been doing this a long time i take nothing for granted and i have nothing but joy in my heart talking about this ever important insurance plan so looking at this first slide um and, and, and i should state we have multiple carrier partners and we work with all occupations but this will be more driven to the occupations that we mentioned but the first couple slides will be kind of talking about everyone and we're disability insurance comes in because people don't line up asking for this. They don't take a tag at, at a store or a financial planner. It's really something that, that really needs to be educated upon where what happens if you're disabled and, and how do you pay your bills if that happens? And everybody has a plan, no matter what anybody says, even if they never heard of it, they inherently have a plan. And one is self-insured and the other is taking some of that risk, mitigate it with disability insurance. So the way we look at it is disability is at the very bottom. It's the foundation. And the reason why we look at that is that when, when someone becomes disabled and you have a disability insurance plan, proceeds or benefits are paid to you to pay all your bills because somewhere, some way you have to pay for your auto insurance, your health insurance, your property insurance, your life insurance. You have savings, you have retirement, you have other bills. All of these things kind of go up, but it kind of starts with the foundation that you need the money to pay those bills. And all these other things are so very important. Everybody says you need life insurance, and, and you do. You need health insurance. Of course you do. You need auto insurance. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be driving if you don't have it, right? <laughs> you need property insurance because things can happen to your house or, or your things. You know, and then the other things of retirement plans, because Mike does an awesome job with investments. You have your savings because there are rainy days, believe it or not, even in Minneapolis. And then if you have business, you have business planning. So all these things come together. But but we try to say, you know, the most important thing is the foundation, which is disability insurance. Now, there are stats to scare you and there are stats to get you excited. Every time I just see the word disability, I get excited. So even though these may sound scary and I'm smiling, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not demented. I, I really do think it's important to share. And during your working years, you are three and a half times more likely to be disabled than pass away. And people think about that. My goodness, that, that is. But you really, to really to notice this is really to go to any restaurant in your area, go to any bar in your area, go to any place of gathering, a church or wherever, wherever you worship, and you will see these fundraisers for people who get in accidents or an unfortunate health event. These things happen, and they're people just like you and I at all ages. 
So it really, that stat three and a half more times when people think about it and they start connecting the dots and become aware, it really is true. The and other Lee, part, would, yeah. Oh, Lee, would you say that disabilities, are they more from the accident side of things or more from uh, just illnesses? Well, what I can tell you is that it actually is both, but health related is about 90% health-wise, 10% accident. Where it can change a little bit, if you are in a blue-collar profession, there you can see a few more accidents, because as you can imagine, you might be on ladders, heavy equipment, some things of that nature that might cause um, accidents. But otherwise, health insurance is the is the more common type of disability event. So those health issues, and, and that's one of the things too that you guys will see here is, most of, of you know who we're talking to today you guys aren't jumping on ladders right it's a lot more working with your hands specialized here and you'll see that really when people think disability insurance they think of those accidents and really it is those kind of health conditions or mental nervous and you'll see that hey from this grid that we have over the the high chart on the left hand side it's those illnesses that really have a big part of where those disability claims come from and why it still makes a ton of sense for you guys in your um, profession or your specialties to still look at it as well. And uh, so Lee, we'll jump onto the next screen as well, because yep. we are talking to pharmacists and optometrists and our dentist friends as well. Uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about the duties there and how we're able to specialize down? Yeah, with, with a lot of things with insurance and especially with disability insurance, there are, there are provisions in the contract that should be important, that, that are important for people in, let's just call it advanced degrees or of specialty work. And I would say with a pharmacist and optometrist, they do unique skill sets that if something would happen to them, if they're disabled, it would be important for them that if they can't do that job, that they would receive proceeds. And, and, and what you don't want to have in a disability contract would be something that if you can't do these jobs, but what sometimes what you might see in a contract is any occupation based on education or experience, that you might be doing something that you have to go back to work or your benefits stop because you can do something that's really not related to a pharmacy um, or an optometry type of work. So, so looking at your duties is so very important and we understand the duties that you do. And and that's and and we will adhere to a contract that fits what's important to you as your duties um, are at work. How about that? Yeah, and so that I would lead to the next thing. Uh, next slide we have here too, Lee and Mike is you know disability insurance on the personal level, um, getting it individually and not just through your employer. It is customizable, and that's a huge part of you know having your own plan and being able to really decide what's important to you and have specialists like Lee and myself and Mike here to go through these and make sure you're comfortable with what you're getting. So Lee, I think one of the biggest things, especially for um, people that are working in this kind of specialized industry is own occupation. So could you talk a little bit about customizing and what own occupation means and go sure. from there? Yeah, let's start with the definition of disability and, and, and own occupation. If you cannot do the pharmacy duties or optometrist duties, however, um, you can do something that's unrelated like real estate, teach, what have you. The benefits would still be paid to you and you still can do something else, a life worth living. Um, that gives you the freedom to customize a plan that fits something that's important to you. The other things that kind of go into a contract, which are important, is that not all disability claims are equal. You might have a situation where you become disabled and by doctor's orders, you cannot work for, for two months. And then they might put you on a modified schedule for the next six months, maybe working two days a week. The second or the, another rider is what they call residual or partial rider. If you can only work two days a week, the proceeds from your disability benefit would pay you the portion that you cannot work. So now you're not rushing back to work too soon and actually have a setback. So it is the most important rider you can put onto a plan, so a residual or partial. Now, another rider that's also very popular and important is a cost of living rider. The younger you are, the more important this rider is that if you become disabled, um, your proceeds will keep up with inflation. And because benefits today paid out 
are not the same 10 years from now, 15 years from now. As we're going through a lot of inflationary impact right now in the economy, everybody's kind of hearing it and feeling it. So that's an important rider you can put on there. The other two riders and things to think about are, you do not know what you're gonna make five years from now, 10 years from now, but you think you're gonna make more. And if you could create a plan where you can actually increase your benefits over time without having to go through medical underwriting in the future would be important. Um, there are riders like that, they call them increase options that you can add to your plan. You don't have to guess what you're gonna make 10 years from now, these plans will let you increase incrementally over time. But the important thing is you lock in your health today. The other one um, that you could actually do this policy would be what they call catastrophic disability benefit. And this is really one of those situations where it's so extreme. It'd be like two of the six ADLs, almost like a long-term care claim, a cognitive impairment with like a dementia and Alzheimer's. So really one of these more extreme cases that would allow you some additional tax-free benefit on top of the normal base benefit because having those type of events do cost more to take care of. You may have to retrofit your house. So it's a, it's a complimentary benefit you can put on. Does have different triggers, does, and, and all these riders do have a cost. So when, when you're discussing this with your planner, Mike, um, you can see how they all lay out and you can see if it kind of fits your budget and if it's important enough to you. Yeah, and, and so that's something that uh, needs to be navigated. If, uh, if you don't know which one of these riders you're more at risk for or which one's make the most sense, you know, for a cost base based on your health and your age, you know, just uh, is there times that you wouldn't recommend some of these riders? Certainly, you know, everybody has a budget, right? Or everybody has um, amount of risk that they want to mitigate. And it just could be, and to give kind of a general idea, people ask me, you know, what is disability insurance cost? It's a fair question. Everybody wants to know that, right? It's usually right around between one to 3% of income. But some people might say, I want to I want to put away $800 a year for disability. So if that is the number, we can kind of design a plan around that number with a couple different things. It could be the benefit period, the weight, or the riders to it. So having that discussion of what they're willing to put away, they understand the need that I do really need to cover this risk. I maybe don't need to co cover all of it, but I want to cover at least this much and then putting a plan around that because there's a lot of different ways you can kind of adjust premium. Which sounds like we're circling back to is disability insurance customizable, which is a rhetorical yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes exactly. Exactly. Couldn't say it couldn't say it any better. Yeah, and with that too, you know, quickly breezing over this here at Highland, uh us partnering with Mike is there is not a restriction on what care you guys have access to. And the big thing is working with us, working with Mike, we're going to be able to look at multiple carriers um, and just see, all right, based on your health, what profession you have, we're not just picking, all right, hey, this is who we use all the time. We have top-notch carriers in the industry to make sure that we're getting you the best pricing and the best plan overall that's fitting exactly what your needs are there. Then Lee, anything else you want to add on the carriers? I, I think the big thing overall is that it is very independent. So we're not pushing to one or the other or saying, hey, we just raised the flag for just a guardian. It is going to be focused on you guys and what's best for um, your situation. We don't play favorites here. Yeah, if anybody says they can tell you exactly where a 37-year-old autometrist can go, I would say no, You that, that that would be false. You have to run the different rates. And a 25-year-old autometrist could be better with one carrier, and a 37-year-old female could be a better with a different carrier. We'll navigate through all of that so you're getting the best value. And I think that's, without giving up any of the definitions, it's really where do you get the best value? And the value is really the contract that you get for the benefit that you get without, and having all things apples to apples. And, and because we're independent, we look at all the carriers and be by working with us, Everyone will be lined up. So you're not seeing one carrier taking off a couple of things and then you're trying to line up, well, why did this one not have the catastrophic and this one had the residual? It would be lined up and then you can make a strong decision based on that. And we're not even talking about the underwriting or the process that goes into this. Most of them are pretty familiar and pretty consistent, but that might be something that we would discuss uh, if a certain age kind of comes into play that we or or a certain benefit amount comes into play, we'd help nav navigate that as well. Absolutely. You know what? Let's see. So then benefits amount, I think Lee, this goes back to just a customizable standpoint. 
Um, how do those benefits, um, you know, amounts, how do we determine them? And also, is it just based off of our normal W-2 income or what else gets factored into how we can decide how much benefit we can uh, qualify for? Yeah, so when it, when it comes to benefit and multiple, the carrier is willing to put on their own paper. You know, the first thing you got to find out, so when you're looking at income, yeah, W-2 income is the most common, your base salary. And and, 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 and 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 looking at that, but there's also incentive comp that could be paid out, bonus. It could be shift differential. If you work later at night, that could be a different wage than just your base salary. There's some other things that go in, but it's looking at that entire amount of income can be covered under a disability policy. And, and what the carriers look at, be, they would normally shoot for something if you had no other coverage at work, it would be about a 60% replacement of income. And people say, oh, wait a minute. I'm buying a disability policy. How am I going to live off of 60%? I want 100% of my income covered. And, and what, what you need to point out is that the benefits, because you're paying for the premiums, they're tax-free. So that 60% is tax-free benefit. The carrier will never have you be able to cover 100% of your income because the carrier wants you to have an incentive to go back to the work. Without having a better situation working than not working, it, it, it's, it's a betterment of risk to the carrier to take, take it on. If there's any underlying group through work, then what you would have is an individual plan stacked on top of a group plan. And the group plan is typically paid for by the employer. But what happens is when you change employers, and, and I've changed a few times, my group plans are different wherever I go. Your individual plan does not change. You take that with you, but a group plan stays with where your last employer is. And if your health changes, now you put yourself at an insurance risk and maybe you can't find coverage. So, so having an individual plan gives you some flexibility without knowing in the future where you're gonna be at. So benefit amounts can kind of change a little bit, but they will wrap around the existing group. And if you don't have group, then it'd be right around a 60% replacement of income. Now, people ask this off, what, what, what is needed? What do you need to know for me to even see what this, I know you mentioned it's like one to 3% of income, but what really goes into just seeing a quote or seeing what a plan would look like? And, and, and this part of it is really simple, and it really is similar for all occupations. It's really, if you want to see a name on the quote, you know, we need a name. Um, but gender is important. And when it comes to disability insurance, it's different than life insurance. Life insurance, females pay less than males. But with disability insurance, females pay more than men. <laughs> and the reason being is that females see the doctor on a more regular basis. Females catch things much sooner than what males do. So males are, uh, things get found and they die much sooner after things are found. With females, they can find things earlier and, and they're treatable, but also you're dealing with what happens to the body with, with children and other things that can also affect the body that ways that men don't as well. So, so gender is very important for the rate. Date of birth. So a driver for rate, it's gender, it's age, because that the older you are, the more rates are going to be than the younger that you are. And a lot of it has to do with you have a lot more medical records. You've seen the doctor a lot more times. Things get discovered later in life, um, but also you have a longer period of time to pay premiums. So we need an age or date of birth. And then the other thing that comes into play is state of residence. With disability, they have pockets where some rates cost more than other states. So we, we do need to know what state you're in. And then income. Income derives benefit. So income is very helpful. Occupation and duties. We say duties because sometimes occupations aren't clear, but with an optometrist, a dentist would be, are you a gentle dentist? Are you a specialty dentist? And what specialty are you in? Um, and then any existing coverage, because they may have other coverage that may not even be group. So we do need to know the other disability insurance. So the existing information that we would need to know is only related to disability. We don't care if you have life insurance, health insurance, property and casualty insurance, things of that nature. The other thing that kind of comes in, and, and this comes into having all the carriers that we have on our shelf, is if you have any health concerns, because this is medically underwritten. Um, if you have a health condition, the carrier may exclude 
They may not offer. So we need to know if you have any health conditions, and then we would shop with the different carriers to see who, who is more favorable in handling that risk. An example could be that you're seeing a chiropractor and we may need to put a back exclusion on there. It could be diabetes, it could be cancer, it could be any of a multitude of related things. So sharing that information on the front end is important so that way we're matching it with the right carrier. If it isn't matched up right, well, then we may have to pivot to another carrier after we find out. Tobacco use does come into play like with all insurance. So if you are using marijuana, if you are chewing tobacco, if you're smoking, tobacco, all that stuff should be shared. Most carriers are all kind of underwriting it the same way. So there is a surcharge for tobacco use. And of course, avocation, racing motorcycles, climbing all the, you know, the top mountains. I mean, all the type of things, that information comes into play because there could be an exclusion for that. Not all cases, if you're not, if you're just, if you have a motorcycle, not a problem, but if you're racing motorcycle and races on the weekends, we have a problem, which we need to incorporate into the policy, which might lead to an exclusion. And once again, you know, that's one of the things where, hey, us having here at Highland, multiple carriers that we're able to go out to, being able to see, all right, who could play more favorable here is a, a great value add to what you guys are doing when we're trying to get these disability policies in place for you. So now we've seen, we've talked about the quote requirements, what we need to get you going. Now, there comes a point where you say, hey, this is awesome. I know what we need to do. Let's move forward with an application so we can get this policy in force. So he talked to us a little bit about that process of, hey, I put the app in, I want the coverage. What do I got to do to get this all done um, and my coverage in force? What does that process look like? Yes, yeah, so, so with, with disability carriers, kind of how they go about it is they have the personal information that's related to where you live, um, height and weight, basic information on, on the, what they call the, the initial uh, e-application process. And then there's a phone interview. And, there, and it's, a, it's a little bit different in the sense where the phone interview kind of comes in. And it also could be an e-like. But what, what they're trying to find out, they're going to ask you if you have, if you're a business owner, they're going to ask you business questions, financial questions, follow-up questions. And imagine a question and answer tree. They're going to ask a question based on what you, you might say. It might be another question. If you said, I had knee replacement two years ago, they're going to ask one more question to make sure it was resolved because they want to make sure they don't have to order those records. So instead of just having the old fashioned fill out an entire app, and then all of a sudden now you get the questions later and then you get the back and forth, they do it all right on the spot to get uh, correct information. And if there is something that needs to be found out, they will ask you who's your primary medical doctor and where to get that information. But all in all, that could be maybe a 10 minute process. The app is all electronic. So that part of it, it's very transactional. And exams, for a lot of disability insurance, up to age 50, up to 10,000 a benefit a month, 120,000 tax-free, there are no exams. Disability tries to make it relatively painless. They wanna get good information by doing that, the question and answer over the phone or through like they call it e-link, and they're, and they're overriding a lot of the exams on the back end. But, but prescription check, DMV check, and medical records may be ordered. And the whole process takes about two to three weeks. It is a really, really quick process. So that ten thousand a month uh, benefit. So, so if that's like uh, sixty percent of someone's income, so you're looking at two hundred thousand dollars a year without the extra testing. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly right. That's kind of where it fits. Yeah, and I think Lee, Mike, that is something that's so important as well. When we go back to the hey this is your journey and how you want to customize your policies, having that control. And some of you may say, hey, you know what, Mike, Lee, Luke, we really don't feel like having to get our blood drawn. Uh, we're busy as heck. We don't have time to do that. Let's go with the 10,000 as a baseline. We can come back down the road, but let's get that as that's something that's still a great boost because at the end of the day, the policy that's the best is the one that's there when we need it. So if that's something where from a time standpoint, hey, 10,000 a month, I don't have to worry about any labs or medical records, we can tailor it to that as well. You know, and that's why we have these one-off conversations with uh, each and every one of you. There's no plan that's gonna be the same because we really do take the time to tailor 
these plans to what your goals are and how much we need to cover for you specifically, right? No one's situation is all completely the same. They're all very unique, um, just like this different sand or snowflakes that fall in a, a storm in Minnesota, right, well, Lisa? <laughs> well, just just uh, the variation of some of the ones that I know are going to be on the call. You know, it's like, uh, am I a W-2 versus I own my own practice versus uh, I'm a sole income earner versus mm -hmm. I've got spousal, you know, which changes the, the income risks, you know? So Absolutely. there's a lot of reason to have that uh, uh, conversation. Absolutely. And it looks like I, I now we. I think that's the most important part that, that, that the control of the whole process is you, you know, the person buying the policy. You control it. We'll, we'll you know, work it in with whatever you want to spend. There's plenty of plans available and, and, and it's easy. But there is, even though we make it sound so easy, there, there's still a lot of little things that you can do to make a policy work for you. And, and everybody, is it's a different situation, a different plan, and we we assume nothing, and we don't and we don't assume carriers. We'll look at all of them. So, so that's going to end our presentation, our webinar for tonight. Um, Mike, do you want to uh, talk about how people can find you, get a one on one meeting set up with you from there, and then no. uh, from there we'll end the recording. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, uh, if we're going to do the old-fashioned phone call, it's at the, at the bottom there of the 231-425-4308. We can put you on the calendar there, and we've also put a QR code on there that gets you right on my digital uh, Calendly link. So you can uh, schedule there, and uh, uh, and you can also set me a, send me an email at uh, mike at sobblepointwm.com and uh, if that's your preference. So no, uh, Luke, Lee, uh, appreciate you both so much today, and I think we got a lot of good information. Awesome. So we'll end the recording now and then take questions from there. So one second as we end this for our uh, people that couldn't make it and let's see. So have a great night, everyone.